And uh, judges, you may begin. All right, good afternoon from Indiana. I'm Robert Dyan. I teach American government at the University of Evansville. Hi everyone, my name is Zach Eastburn. I am an attorney hailing from Madison, Wisconsin. Glad to be here. And I'm Tom Tinder. I'm an attorney from Charleston, West Virginia. Hi, I am Max Brager from RCB High School. And I am Langston Wolf. Hi, and I am Ashley George. We're representing Mr. Phillips Unit for AP Gov class. Wonderful. Well, we're looking forward to hearing what you have to say. And today we're looking at question two about legislative oversight. I'll read it to you and then uh, the floor is yours. Members of Congress are not only legislators, but they, quote, are also inquisitorial and should meet frequently to inspect the conduct of the public officers, close quote. How effectively do you believe Congress has used its investigatory power? Explain the differences, if any, between the power to investigate and the power of oversight. Which power, in your opinion, is more significant? And finally, how effectively do you believe Congress has used its oversight powers? You may begin. Congress's investigatory powers are their right to investigate anything related to the development of public policy. The Constitution states that Congress has the power to make all laws which shall be necessary and proper for carrying into execution the foregoing powers. Prior to the present, there is evidence to claim that Congress has utilized its investigatory powers effectively. In the court case McGrain v. Daughtery, a case was heard before the Supreme Court that challenged Malley Daughtery's contempt conviction and arrest, which happened when he failed to appear before a Senate committee. Congress is utilizing its implied power to investigate the failure of Daughtery's brother to investigate the perpetrators of the Teapot Dome scandal. The court upheld his conviction and held that under the Constitution, Congress has the power to compel witnesses to appear and provide testimony. Additionally, there remains evidence presently that Congress utilizes implied constitutional power. In 2016, Congress exercised its investigatory powers during the Benghazi scandal involving Hillary Clinton and her private emails. The House Republicans issued more than 70 subpoenas. The documents included demands for documents, threats of subpoenas, and summons for testimony at numerous hearings. Though she was never convicted, this highlights Congress's implication of its investigatory powers. When it comes to the difference between Congress's power of oversight and its investigatory powers, the terms have often appeared side by side, pulling into question their individual meanings. They do both represent Congress's ability to reach outside their jurisdiction and manipulate mostly executive ordeals. In reality, these powers work in tandem to fully exercise legislative review. Oversight allows Congress to look over the executive branch's development and policy, as would an employer or supervisor. This is especially useful when Congress assumes responsibility over select budgets in order to pressure policy developments. The only shortcomings to this power is its effectiveness in regard to the president. Congress possesses no oversight powers over the president of the United States due to it manipulating the process of checks and balances and creating a monopoly of power within the legislative branch. Congress does, however, control the ability to inquire about how executive processes transpire through its investigatory power. This is most useful during trials of impeachment, such as the most recent case against Donald Trump. James Madison spoke that the House should possess itself of the fullest information in order, in order to do justice to the country and public officers. Although the power of investigation has its strength over oversight, the power of oversight is in many ways the superior power that Congress assumes control. Its effectiveness is vastly significant in diminishing unlawful executions of bills and policy. Congressional oversight refers to review, monitoring, and supervision of federal agencies, programs, and policy implications. And it provides the legislative branch with an opportunity to inspect, examine, review, and check the executive branch and its agencies. Congressional oversight is the executive branch's, uh, is a critical part of the, part of the United States federal government systems of checks and balances. The constitution says nothing about congressional investigations and oversight, but the authority con Duct investigations and applied since Congress possesses all legislative powers. In an essay in 1774, James Wilson wrote, Grand Inquisitors of the Realm, the proudest ministers of the proudest monarchs, have trembled at their censors and have appeared at the bar of the House. 
to give an account of their conduct and ask pardon of their faults. Congress doesn't use the, their power to their full potential, therefore they shouldn't be the only people who can use this power. All right, thank you very much. I'm intrigued by the last line that you said, Congress doesn't use its power to its full potential. Can we uh, unpack that a little bit? Why is it that Congress is failing to use its power to the full potential? Um, I feel like, in, <laughs> sorry, um, I feel like in past, like with Donald Trump, even though there has been instances that he has caught like done some things that I feel like Congress should like step into and I feel like they did not like step into what their what they should have done to control the situation. I agree with Ashley and I believe that uh, while Congress ha does have this power to you know request subpoenas uh, the uh, you know impeachment trials, were mostly political and revolved around political parties rather than the information that was presented. So in that way, Congress uh, really used, used the power, but it didn't, it was not very effective. Keep backing off of what they were saying about Trump. I feel like for the longest time, Congress didn't use that power to its full ability. Toward the end, they it seemed like it was very rushed and it seemed like it was very condensed into one period of time, especially considering his impeachment trial happened, the second impeachment trial happened after the election and the fact that we had to go through a second impeachment trial. So let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, we, you guys were talking about in, impeachment, how it wasn't very effective. Um, you know, I think implied in that is, you know, I think, I think you guys were also talking a little bit about some of this is used for political gain. Uh, what limits, if any, do you think should be placed on Congress's investigatory powers? See, uh, Congress investigatory powers, while have been uh, useful to Congress, there are many other uh, parts of government that essentially do the same job, such as the FBI, CIA. They also have this power of uh, being able to uh, find information. So, oh, Congress hasn't really had a need uh, besides impeachment or situations of that lichen to use this uh, power of investigation. Now you mentioned about uh, uh, the, the uh, ability for oversight is the superior uh, power that it has and, and and how does it utilize that power in oversight? In other words, after they do the oversight, then what particular um, powers are available to Congress to, uh, to pursue action or to take action? So the oversight powers allow Congress to step in and uh, dictate how certain budgets or, uh, you know, how they want the policy to be implemented and sort of uh, pressure uh, you know, the bureaucracy to, into that idea that the law has, uh, has mandated. Piggybacking off of what Max was talking about with its, investi with its oversight powers. After using its oversight powers, Congress has the, Congress's whole job is to implement policy and agenda. So I feel like after analyzing these things, they can take that into consideration when implementing new policies. I'd like to ask about the confirmation process, if I can. Um, some people suggest that it's part of the oversight function, but um, only about 800 people are subject to Senate confirmation, and there's 4 million bureaucrats. So uh, what do you make of the argument that confirmation doesn't really give Congress an opportunity to crack the whip and make the bureaucrats dance to their tune? So, I'm sorry, um, I you cut out for some of that on my audio. Can you repeat that one more time? 
the confirmation process? Is it a useful tool for legislative oversight to uh, in, impel the bureaucracy to behave a certain way? I personally believe that the confirmation process is an effective tool that Congress can use, yes. It is part of their uh, oversight powers, but uh, on its effectiveness, uh, I haven't seen any instances where it was obvious that Congress um, was in complete control of uh, the bureaucracy. Let me ask another question based on that. Uh, so we're talking about executive agencies and you know how do we hold them accountable, but let's talk about the, fa the, the fact that these agencies exist. Um, you, know, you mentioned that Congress's authority and a function is to create law. Is the fact that federal agencies exist at all um, a violation of separation of powers? Uh, the bureaucracy is necessary to implement law, but one can argue that uh, because Congress has this investigatory and oversight power that uh, they, they aren't allowed to do their job because they are being looked over by Congress and cannot implement the way they would choose to. So there is a uh, push and pull between the bureaucracy and Congress that needs to be addressed. Necessarily say, think that I would say that it's a, a violation of the separation of powers simply because Congress, whenever it implements policy, it gives it to the bureaucracy to kind of disperse that of sorts in ways that would be most beneficial to the area that they're in or most beneficial to the citizens of this nation. So I don't necessarily think it's a violation of that, I guess I would say. Has uh, Congress given up um, any of its powers, any of its uh, authority uh, to either? the executive branch or the judicial branch? And if so, what powers were they? I wouldn't say that they have given up power. Uh, there is that famous quote that uh, power given cannot be taken back. So uh, there are very many limitations on Congress getting more power, but as far as taking away, that is very limited because Congress and every branch of government always wants to have the power to do what they want. So um, I wouldn't say that they have given up much to any power, but their use of certain powers has been limited. I can sneak in one quick question. You mentioned Benghazi and some thought that that was a very partisan investigation. Do you have any thoughts on how you draw the line between what's legitimate inquiry and what's partisan? For the Benghazi scandal, I feel like because the person involved, Hillary Clinton, was part of the government, I feel like that's where you draw the line is when it when it affects um, national security. I feel like that's when it becomes an issue of government related things versus partisan based. Oh, I'm glad you got the answer. And thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, yay. Thank you for your time. Uh, well, absolutely, and thank you, and congratulations for making it to the national competition. Um, you're our first team of the day, and so uh, we appreciate you getting us started. Um, I liked the mention of Benghazi. It's a very timely, it's in your lifetime and mine, uh, and there's not always a lot of overlap there. Um, you, you talked about the impeachment process as one tool of uh, um, uh, the oversight process. The constitutional foundations, uh, which are kind of uh, sketchy because it's not mentioned in the Constitution, but there is that necessary and proper clause. And then the thing that jumped out for me from the presentation is right at the end, the James Wilson quote. I came across that James Wilson quote more than once, but I didn't know the precise uh, source because they kept saying before the Philadelphia Convention. So you've helped me today, and I, now I know that it's from 1774. Um, I think some of the Q&A might have been a little too focused on impeachment, um, there's, there's a whole array of things that Congress can do besides just going straight for impeachment. And I think part of the problem is that when we think of the executive branch, we only think of the president. Uh, and when we think of the president being held to account, we think of impeachment. And it's been in the air for the last couple of years, so it's not your fault for thinking of that. Um, and I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it to my colleagues uh, to, to share what their thoughts are. 
Yeah, so thank you again. Uh, I would echo some of the comments. I think the, um, you know, some of the, sometimes with questions, it is um, a distinguishing factor when the team answers the question. I think one question that I definitely noticed that you guys answered was the subpart A question, the which one do you think, which power do you think is more significant, oversight or investigate? And you guys said um, that you thought that oversight uh, power, I think, was more effective. Yeah. And uh, you, you mentioned um, the super, supervision of federal agencies. So I thought there were some clear points in your, your um, opening statement that were easy to follow. Um, I think in the question and answer, there were times where, where, where questions were asked and you guys, you guys gave answers that, um, you know, where you, you took a position on something which was clear, which was good. But uh, sometimes what was lacking was maybe um, some examples of what, why you were taking the position you were taking on it. So you might, you might say, um, you know, that, that bureaucracy is, is necessary to implement law um, and, you know, support that with some sort of historical or constitutional reasoning. Um, but, you know, that said, uh, I did appreciate that you guys were clear in taking positions. You weren't afraid to, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure anything like that. You did take a position. So that was a good, um, strong effort uh, on your part with that. Um, just looking through my notes here. Yeah, I also appreciated the contemporary example of Benghazi. It's, it's funny because we were we were just talking about that uh, prior to prior to this, so it was a very um, good timely example. And so I think everyone on the panel uh, the, of the judges appreciated that reference and and the discussion. So thank you for that. Um, and overall, I, 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 a, a good a good presentation. Thank you. Well, I enjoyed it, and uh, congratulations to you. I think you did a a good job. Um, you, you hit all the points uh, in, uh, in your four minute opening presentation. Um, I, I, I do second the comment that was made by one of my colleagues that uh, you, could, you should consider giving some more uh, examples. And in addition to that, you, you may wanna consider when, when you state a position on something uh, and, and which is basically just giving your opinion based upon your knowledge and research. Uh, you may also um, want to give the other side of the argument, uh, the other side of the issue. And maybe I say that because uh, Zach and I are lawyers and you're supposed to know both sides of the case. Uh, you, you may want to consider uh, doing that, um, saying that your position is, is such and such. Uh, you do understand that the other side of the issue or another point of view is such and such, but we feel very strongly in it. Uh, our team or that you personally feel that this is uh, the appropriate answer. Um, I, um, I like that you gave us a, uh, a distinction uh, in answer to the question about uh, whether, uh, uh, which is important, you said uh, oversight is superior to the investigation power and, and that was good. Um, overall, I thought you did a good job and uh, congratulations to you and the best of luck to you. And let me add one just quick comment and that is you know you you do have a tremendous amount of of knowledge and and understanding of these important issues uh, and you've demonstrated your leadership capabilities and and uh, please don't have this just be a uh, a classroom assignment or a semester responsibility but uh, you're good citizens and uh, we need good citizens like you uh, for the future of our state and of our country uh, best of luck to you thank you thank you Thank you. Thank you for your time.